The other day I was in an airport and I forgot to pick up from the plane the magazine of the airline, which had some very good stories in it. So I went over to a man who had the uniform of the Piedmont Airlines on his coat and explained I'd like to have one of his magazines if he had any of them available. He looked at me and he said, glad to meet you. I too am a member of the fellowship. Beautiful way to put it. I was meeting a, a fellow member of Christ's fellowship. Well, I'm not asking you for a magazine. I'm asking you to join Jesus Church. So, come forward after the service if you're thus minded. We have two wonderful people here, John Hillhouse and Marion Patterson, and they'll take care of the rest of it. Now, I notice in the newspaper that the tallest man in the world died the other day. His name was Roy or Donald Kohler. And uh, Harry Corba, one of our members, knew him personally. He was eight feet two inches in height. And he had a place in the Guinness Book of Records thereby. His foot size was 24 and a half. <laughs> 10. <laughs> His twin sister, he being eight feet two, his twin sister was five foot five. <laughs> his father was six foot two. His mother was five foot nine. He was a modest gentleman. They tried to get him in the circus and other exhibitions, but he would never do it. He lived the daily life of a successful salesman. He was a good man. He was a champion in his business activities. He didn't have to depend upon being eight foot two to be a champion. How would you like to be eight foot two? You'd have to get a special bed, wouldn't you? So it might not be all that pleasant. But I cite this case because I admire anybody who is a champion. What is a champion? A champion is a person who does something superlatively well, whatever it is. You don't have to get your name on the sports pages to be a great champion or listed in your company activities as the champion salesperson of the month. Just do the job well. Be the best at whatever you do. Or as near the best as you can make it. Now, I am a great reader of sports events and see a few whenever possible. And whenever I get in the presence of a famous athletic champion, I'm awed by him. And I was with one not so long ago. He, I was asking him questions and he said to me, now, Dr. Peel, I know that you're pumping me in order to use me as an illustration in a sermon. <laughs> and I'll answer all your questions if you don't mention my name. Because he said I shrink from that kind of publicity. Very modest uh, individual. So I said to him, what 
are the principal ingredients in being a champion. He said, number one, have a goal, not a fuzzy, inconclusive goal, but a sharp, clearly defined goal. And then he said, be willing to sacrifice everything of pleasure in order to attain it. And then, discipline yourself. Have thorough dedication at all times. Hang in there. Never give up. And I said you've heard all these before. Everybody said this. And he added, you've got to have intense desire. If with all your heart, that's the idea. But he said, having said all these things, the basic ingredient that makes champions is faith. Faith in God, faith in Jesus, because that gives you faith in yourself. These are the ingredients that make champions. Now, a recent edition of Sports Illustrated magazine tell about a remarkable boy named Bobby Carpenter. Age 17, who is considered to be the greatest high school hockey player in the history of the United States. He is at 17 in high school, one of 10 of the greatest hockey players in the world. All the professional teams have their eye on Bobby Carpenter. He has to decide whether to go for a college education or pro hockey, and only he, I presume, can make the decision. But in analyzing this boy, the writer said the secret of the greatness of this boy is he is survival-oriented. It's a curious phrase. I hadn't heard it before. Survival-oriented. That is, nothing can break him. And that is because he's undergirded by a good Catholic home which has integrated him in the faith and made a strong human being of him. So faith makes champions in every field of activity. I have a letter in my hand written by one of the greatest business leaders of this United States. If I were to mention his name, many of you would know it. You would know his products. For nobody came here this morning that didn't make use of his product. And you won't get home if his product isn't working when you get into your car. That's the nearest I can get to it. <laughs> I never read a letter unless I have the permission of the writer, and I only received the letter yesterday, so I couldn't get the permission of the writer, hence I have to cover it up in this foolish manner. <laughs> but but I, I like this man's letter. 
He's a champion. He says, it has been some time since I've corresponded with you, and even though I've thought about you and have prayed for you over the years, I feel I've been neglect negligent in not acknowledging your help and guidance in my life. It was through the inspirational messages in your book that I was directed to the scriptures in which I found such a complete formula for a full and rewarding life. Now, you know, I read in the magazines today a, a campaign about the renewal of America, and I'm all for it. I think that's great. And I'm not one to go around decrying the media. But I do wish they'd get over this stupid idea that there's something wrong about mentioning the religious motivation that has made this country what it is and made the great people of this country what they are. Everywhere I go, I move among the people. And the people are religious. But for some reason or other, their magazines hesitate ever to mention it, or at least not mention it very much. Why are they so frightened? Do they think the Supreme Court's going to get them? <laughs> well, at any rate, here's a man. Now, here's one of the great business leaders. He doesn't hesitate to come out and say this. I've learned to turn problems of every nature over to the Lord, and I pray for the health and well-being and direction of all the people of our organization every day. Prayer, faith, and patience are certainly a strong medicine which is needed in a declining society. I still remember the beautiful letter I received from you when I lost my son in an auto accident several years ago. I'll never forget it. I've been president of our company for over 25 years now and can truthfully say that without the inspiration and faith I have acquired, in having the love and strength of our Lord, I never would have survived the problems and challenges that uh, it has been my privilege to deal with. This letter is an attempt to acknowledge and give thanks for your dedicated efforts. Well, he, I'm sorry I got onto that paragraph. It, it's too personal, but since I got started, I might as well hang in there with it. <laughs> This letter is an attempt to acknowledge and give thanks for your dedicated efforts over the years, which I am sure have had a significant and beneficial effect on the spiritual, mental, and physical lives of millions of people who adhere to the principles which you, to which you subscribe. I feel there is hope for this country. I really believe that most American people are sick and tired of the continuous deterioration of our society and are willing to fight for a new beginning as a renewal of the faith in God on which this country was founded. How do you like that? The continual search for enlightenment through a study of the scriptures and prayers is an exciting experience. And even though I consider myself a novice, I recognize many milestones and sense of great satisfaction in my personal life as well as my business life and the relationship which exists between our company people all over the world. Here's a champion. Faith made him a champion. The Bible tells us in the passage which was read to us today we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Well, how do you get this kind of faith? You get it out of desire. You want to be more than you seem to be. You want to be 
all that you can be. You want to do all that you can do. Now, I don't want you to think that this sermon consists of the reading of a lot of letters. <laughs> but I, I do have another one here. And I like this one for obvious reasons. Dear Dr. Peel, I'm writing this letter to get myself fired up with enthusiasm again. I want to be a champion. I was on the right track when I lost steam. You see, Dr. Peel, I'm in sales and I'm trying to hit a certain goal. Specifically, I want to sell $20,000 of my company's products per month for the entire year. Last month, I sold only about 5,000. Not good at all. Also, my goal is realistic. In December, I sold 39,000, and in November, 23,000. So, I've done it before. Perhaps here's where I got off the track. I stopped exercising and put on 10 pounds. I stopped reading Og Mandino's book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, which I was reading three times per day. He doesn't advertise any of my books in this letter. <laughs> so basically, I lost my faith, confidence, and persistence. And those are the three basic ingredients for success. Also, I've let my enthusiasm dwindle. Okay, Dr. Peel, here's the deal. I will once again go back to my campaign and work harder than before. I'm starting this day with a healthier diet and I will exercise every day by running. When I get back on the track and hit my goal of an average of $20,000 per month, in August, I'll send you a check for $150 for your church. Now, well, that's not 10%, is it? <laughs> I have to write him about that part of it. I listen to your program on WOR Radio every Sunday, and I believe that I owe a large part of my success to date to your motivational sermons and book. Wish me luck. Expect a check in August. <laughs> Anybody else want to write me a letter? <laughs> you see, this man knows what he wants to do. He knows how he's failed. He listens to religious radio because he knows that it's faith, after all, that makes them champions. So I believe, really, that the church, which can be defined in many ways, is a meeting place for the training of champions. Every Sunday morning when you come into a church, you sit in a pew and you listen to somebody talk who ought to, ought to justify your attendance. And his job, as I see it, is to, not to tell you something new, because you know already. But his job is to remind you of what you already know. That if you have faith in God, faith in the Lord Jesus, you'll have faith in yourself, you'll have faith in what you're trying to do in life, and you will proceed to make yourself a champion in that field. That's what it is. It's a place of worship. It's a hospice for wounded souls. It's a hospital for broken bodies. 
It's a rejuvenation center for broken spirits. It's a place of love and fellowship. It's a place for the renewal of the faith. It's a place to decide how we can change this society for the better. It's a place to instruct little children, marry idealistic young people, say the last kindly words over the dead. It's all that, but it's a gathering place for the motivation of champions. Now, I, I met another little champion the other day. She's a very little girl. Her name is Paula Darcy. And Paula told us about marrying a wonderful young man, a school teacher. He must have been a good man. He read his Bible every night. He loved to garden. Then they had a little baby. And then they went to Cape Cod to see her parents. Meanwhile, she was pregnant with a second child. On the way back from Cape Cod, a man who'd been drinking a great deal came across the median strip at a high rate of speed, hit their car, and the next thing she knew, she awakened in the hospital to be told that her husband and her little girl were dead. All life ended for Paula in that moment, but did it. She knew that she had a new life growing within her. She knew she had to live for this child. She had the faith. She deepened her faith. Then came the day when the little girl was born, who's now about five. And Paula has written a book called Song for Sarah. It was published in the Reader's Digest to its entire circulation of 25 million readers around the world. She's going to speak in this church pretty soon, I see. She broke me all up when I listened to her. She said, in essence, if your life is dedicated to Jesus, you become more than a conqueror. You can handle anything. Faith does indeed make champions. Our Heavenly Father, here's a wonderful group of people gathered together in this church this morning. They come from New York City and Connecticut and New Jersey and Pennsylvania and upstate New York and all over the place. And Every one of them's here because they're believers in their hearts. Help them to really know what they can do with their lives and what they can become. And forgive us all for all our faults and failures and let us go out of this church presently walking tall, walking on air in the knowledge that we're more than conquerors through him who loves us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.